first off, just um, working with Russell Crowe as a director, you know, how is he, you know, to work with? Amazing. Look, um, you know, hard not to be uh, really excited to come on a job like this and have Russell, you know, direct you. And, um, you know, he certainly brings a presence when he's on set. But, you know, it, it was, I would say, it was a really, really enjoyable experience. It was uh, his humility, his experience, and, uh, and just a, a really, really nice vibe that he brought with it. Russ was great company through the whole thing. So uh, I feel immensely privileged and, and very, very, uh, um, yeah, I, I'm really, really lucky to be a part of it. So, um, I, I, you know, you, you dream of and hope of different things in your career and, and to be working with Russell was one of those things that perhaps you think might not ever happen, but um, I'm really, really glad that it did. It was a great experience. Hello. Lovely to meet you. First off, just, you know, working with Russell Crowe, you know, what's that like? How is he on a set? Uh, working with Russell Crowe is a privilege for an actor, I mean, any actor. I've been really lucky, I've been directed by Russell twice now, so I've had a lot of time with him on set. And I think it's really not an exaggeration to say he's one of Australia's greatest all-time cinema artists because of the amount of experience he has, the amount of people that he's worked with, and he brings that to set every day, all that wisdom. And he's really keen to share it. He doesn't withhold that. He, he, he wants to impart that wisdom to everyone around him. And so, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. We all, we all get better by working with him. That, that wisdom rubs off. And personally, I was pinching myself every day on set getting the work across. Thank you for chatting with us. Hi. Um, first off, congratulations on the film. Thank you. Um, can you just talk to us about your character? Absolutely. I play uh, Sam Levine. I'm Russell's probate lawyer. Uh, long time sort of lawyer uh, around uh, Russell's other businesses in the in the film, in Jake's businesses. Early on in the movie, Russell finds out that he has a terminal illness. It's not a spoiler. It happens in the first couple of minutes, I promise. And the trailer. And the trailer. There you go. And, um, and I then have the worst day of my life um, and there's plenty of twists and turns but um, that's sort of what I, what I played is this guy's really well put together he's a really sort of well put together Sydney lawyer and by the end of that he's had the worst day of his life great thanks for chatting with us <laughs> <laughs> congratulations on the film thank you it is such a high like intensity high stakes film as an actor how do you kind of keep that intensity up you know, between takes and everything well you sort of learn after a while to conserve your energy <laughs> you know when you're on set you kind of uh, when you when you're in in a trailer waiting for you know for your scene you sort of conserve your energy i don't speak to too many people i don't um, you know do anything that requires too much energy. I save it for when I'm in front of the camera. Otherwise, you just get tired out on 12-hour day when you're on, on set. If you're sort of carrying that energy the whole time, it just uh, you chew through it, and by the end of the day, you're a mess. <laughs> so you've got to learn. I think with age comes, you know, a bit of, uh, I guess, um, well, experience in, in with that stuff, and you sort of learn to time your energy and use it when you really need it. But it was an intense sort of um, atmosphere on set. So. Great, thanks for chatting with us. Have Cheers. a great night. No worries. See you. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Um, first, congratulations on the film. Thank you. Um, can great you just chat to us about your character? You know, yeah, sure. So, um, she's because obviously a, a a like a teen girl in a very like vulnerable but, you know, time you, in her life. Um, she's going through a star. lot, <laughs> like so, emotionally, you know, and you really see that. I guess it's a very like intense sort of story for her and to be able to like play that and show that vulnerability is really really intense I guess at heart she's just like a sweet sweetheart she's a sweet girl and she's got a lot on her play and she doesn't deserve what she goes through honestly I guess like, it's kind of hard for her <laughs> yeah as an actor you know it's so you know the situations you're in is very high intensity yeah. there's a lot of men there's a lot of like yeah. danger you know yeah. how as an actor how do you get into that mindset and how do you kind of switch off as well um, I guess it's it's really good when you're working with these actors who may be playing these really high intense characters but are actually very lovely people in real life. It really helps to have those like really open and like true conversations with them beforehand to be able to establish like that relationship first and then once you get to that it's all just like acting <laughs> uh, like essentially 
once it's cut, like once cut is said, it's kind of a switch off in the sense that you can have those like open conversations and talk out what just happened. There's a lot of apologies like afterwards if someone's in a really high intensity scene just being like, sorry, didn't mean any of that. But yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's just about those open conversations really. Great. Well, thanks for chatting with us. Have Thank a great you. night. See you. Mr. Damon, can I ask you just a quick question? Of course. I've recently seen New Tuesdays. Can you just please chat, talk about the experience of making that and how much fun you had? Yeah, New Tuesday was an insane amount of fun, as you can imagine. I mean, obviously, just the whole idea of speaking in gibberish the whole time was itself incredible. You know, like that was, that just made the whole thing so much fun. Didn't have to learn any lines, but you didn't have to know what you were saying because we did have an English script and we were sort of translating it on the spot into this made-up language. Um, and it was in New Zealand and a really lovely group of people. Yeah, it was super fun. Fantastic. And what is any latest projects you can chat to us about? Uh, the, the thing I just finished is called The Bike Riders. It's a, uh, a, a film that um, Jeff Nichols, who people might know from Mud and Take Shelter and Loving, amazing writer-director, uh, it's a, a film he, he's just he was still making actually in, uh, in, in uh, Cincinnati in Ohio and it's about a, a biker gang in the 1960s and it's super cool. Thanks for chatting with us, have a great night. Thank you. See Thanks. you. It came to me and said, look, there's five weeks to go. Uh, do you want to take over this uh, piece for that new full set up? It hasn't been actually passed. Uh, the set's aren't built. Uh, most of the budget's already been spent. But uh, you've got five weeks before you shoot, what do you reckon? And uh, the other part of it was we still had to make a bit of contract which we were. We were in the pandemic, the city was about to go into lockdown, and all of those people would lose their job. So I found myself making a decision that my father would make, and that is prioritising keeping the people at work. And I can deal with the embarrassment of not really knowing what I'm doing on this until I work out the fuck I am. So uh, not in problem due to the original writer who uh, Stephen Coates but the script had to be hands on it, people get with it and stuff like that and they think they've got an idea but they never completed it. So I looked at that and went, hmm, can't deal with that, got to write it again. So I started <laughs> nine days of the draft, let everybody criticise it and tell me it was shit, four days to the second draft and basically then we're off. And, you know, I've been up through the night trying to get people like Lisa and Liam and also people like focus on this as something that possibly they're not going to join in on. So it all dovetailed together. You know, it was going along swimmingly. Then we had uh, the lady who was uh, doing our coffee at uh, coronavirus. So we had to shut down. Now that bumped into my schedule, which had a six month cycle before I could get back to actually found the rest of the shoot. And when I did, two days into it, the heavens opened just like before. And New South Wales was flooding. One of my sets just actually washed down. So we had to shut down again, restart. But what it becomes is an actual test of fucking resilience. And for me, it's like a perfect example of the Australian film industry. All this shit was going down. All this stuff was, was out of shape. And it just got done. At the end of the day, it just got done. You know, and if there's a message in it, which I think we should have <laughs> let's say if there's a message in it for young people that are watching it or whatever, art is never created. 